Hey, 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 everyone, welcome back to day four. Oh my God, can you guys believe that we are on day four of the five day summit? This is super, super exciting. So let me wait a few minutes for some of you guys to join us. And let me start sharing the screen. I mean, sharing in some places here. So let's see, can I start a watch party? Okay. So welcome back to day four again. So we're gonna get started just to be mindful of people's time. And our guest speaker is super anxious to show you what she has here today. So let me um, share my screen and start introducing you to her. She is um, amazing, like all the other speakers, of course. Let's see, let me share my screen with you here, just so you can see her as I am introducing her to you. So our next guest today for day four, um, the 12 p.m. session, her name is Samantha. Samantha is the mother, she's an entrepreneur and an event and program operations specialist. Her professional interests include program development, sexual wellness and health, process improvements, youth advocacy, and social entrepreneurship. So today, Samantha's gonna share with us her love for art therapy via life painting and show you how you can take advantage of the quarantine just to explore the artistic side inside of you. And you're probably saying, I don't have one. Let me tell you, we all have one. So help me welcome Samantha Nichols to the show. Hi, Samantha. Hi, Rosa. How are you? Thank you for adding me to the lineup. Thank you for taking this opportunity to show you some of your talent. And like a lot of us are stuck at home during the quarantine. And not only can we explore our artistic side, but we can also do it with our kids, right? Absolutely. So I was thinking like, what could I do to contribute to this? And I'm a serious person. So I thought I should probably do something that would lighten up the mood. <laughs> So, um, right. So art th therapy for me was something that I just came across because of trauma that occurred in my family's life back in 2013. And, you know, when you go through trauma, if you don't deal with it, it will eventually explode and sometimes on the wrong person. And that's kind of what I experienced. Mm -hmm. And so I was invited to go to a paint night one night and... After that paint night, I literally went to Michael's and bought a whole paint kit. Oh, wow. And I have been painting pretty much since 2014. So, um, like you said, like, everybody is an artist. You know, sometimes I tell myself I'm not an artist. I don't know what I'm doing. And to this day, I probably still say that. But it's really just about loosening up, being creative, and really letting your mind free. Just because life is so busy now, we never take the time to just sit and breathe. Mm -hmm. So for me, painting is the opportunity for me to cut out any chaos going on and kind of just relax. So I want to share this with everybody. Um, I know we're in quarantine right now, but you can definitely still order supplies online. And later on through the slides, I'll show you some places and resources that you can use to purchase your own items and kind of just do your own exploring on your own. Okay, so should I start the slides now? Yes, so you can oh. just get past that. Well, I'll talk about art therapy for a little bit. So like how I kind of mentioned, um, art therapy is an opportunity for you to kind of just take care of your mental being, your well-being. And that could be through you doing your own art or you exploring other people's art. And I can, I create my own art, but then I'm also like infatuated with other people's art. And I definitely try to encourage them because um, I'm in a few art groups and some people are discouraged by the things that they create. But um, art is in the eye of the beholder. So not everybody sees the same thing. So um, I just try to be, sometimes people need that, right? So moving on to the next slide. I am going to move my camera down because you guys can't see what's in front of me. So you're not gonna be able to see my face. You'll just hear my voice at this point. So I'm gonna shift down and show you what I'm working with. Okay, I hope you guys can see this. Okay, so what I have in front of me 
is a canvas board. I'm shifting this a little bit so that you guys can see. Okay, here we go. So first I wanna talk about setting up your area. As you can see in front of me, I have a canvas board. I try to utilize anything that I have instead of spending tons and tons of money. But as a disclaimer, I've been painting since 2014, so I have all type of supplies. And so if you're considering this, do not get yourself hung up in trying to purchase all these things. I would try to utilize what you have around your home until you get comfortable with doing this type of art and then invest in it. So right now I have um, a canvas in front of me. I believe this is 12 by 16. I could be a little bit wrong. This is a special kind of canvas. It's a gallery size canvas. You usually see canvases that have a, a little uh, thinner width here so underneath i have these holders that gives balance for the canvas your canvas needs to i'm sorry about that let me shut that off real, real quick so your canvas needs to be leveled out um, in order for the paint to um, not be wasted basically so i have these yellow holders underneath it I also have what I consider to be protective liner, which is newspaper. So instead of going and buying, you can just use the newspaper to protect your surface. Yeah, I'm sorry, your surface. And then for additional materials, I have a cup, which will, I'll use to pour the paint in. I have mixing sticks to mix the paint. Also paper towel gloves as you can see because this is messy um but that's the fun part of it not worrying about trying to be neat you just want to create and then i'm just going to introduce you to some other items that i have so for the sake of time i've created my paint in these bottles they're pre-mixed the paint consists of what i'm sorry the pre-mix consists of water paint and a pouring medium and the pouring medium that I use is called Floatrol, which is right here. Uh, when I first started doing this, I was using glue instead of Floatrol. So that's also another option as well. I would encourage anybody that wants to dig deeper into this to maybe do some YouTube searches on the measurements in terms of how much Floatrol you should use, how much water you paint you should use. I do have a slide that will give you an example of how much paint you need for a particular size canvas. And I'll show that slide later. Oh, there it goes. Yep. So this here is just a guiding tool. I can tell you that I ignore all of this and I kind of just do what works for me. And um, before I start to uh, paint, I just want to show you some of the art that I've already created. So right here is uh, one of my first, it's not really my first, my first paintings are in storage somewhere. Done probably in 2015. And this is what you call an acrylic pour. So I have five different paints and then I took it to another level and added these gems here. So um, this is one of the first ones I've done. And then at the end of the week, Rosa is gonna raffle off not one, but three of these paintings. So. Here is a canvas panel. It's full and it's, here's another canvas panel here, same size, small, easy to work with. So instead of getting these big canvases, you can get something small so you can test out exactly um, where you wanna go in terms of your creativity. And so here's the third one. So these I'm gonna raffle off through Rosa and she'll talk more about that later on. Um, either today or tomorrow. So I'm gonna get started uh, with the mix. And actually before I start to put paint in there, I like to base my canvas. One, because I don't wanna lose too much paint. And two, I don't want the canvas to thin out. So I'm trying to give it another layer so that it can last long. So here I have white paint um, like one part white paint. So one part, I'm just going to say like one ounce of white paint and then about four ounces of Floatrol and then some combination of water. The goal is to create some level of consistency. Um, moving on to the next slide. 
the goal is to create some level of consistency. So as you can see, you really want to get something that's um, like, right? So hopefully you guys can see, forgive me. Um, if you can see the paint dripping like honey, kind of, <laughs> or melted ice cream, that is the consistency that you want to get. The goal is for the paint to be able to move through the canvas and kind of do its own thing because that's really what's going to happen. You might, in your mind, have a design that you want to create, but if you um, don't have too much experience in this, and I say that because I've seen acrylic pour with some amazing designs and I couldn't create them because I have not gone down that skill set yet. So uh, for the sake of not setting expectations, I would say just enjoy what the paint does for you. So right now I'm going to cover my canvas uh, with white right now. So this part scares me because I really don't know what's going to happen after I add other colors. So right now I'm spreading the paint across the canvas. I usually would use a spatula, but not spatula, sorry, a knife palette. But it's somewhere behind me and my workspace is kind of tight right now. So I'm just gonna work with it. So I've had this canvas for a while and it's a little dull, but I'm gonna work with it. But the goal here is to cover the canvas so that your paint will have more vibrant colors when it dries. Because, of course, what you're going to see when I put the paint down is going to probably have a little different effect once it dries. So something like this takes about 24 hours to 48 hours to dry. And if you want to take it a step further and gloss it, then there's like another 24 to 4 to that. I've seen, and also depending on the size of the canvas, it could take even longer than that. So it is a process. Okay. I know this looks messy, but I can tell you right now, I was stressed before I came on here and I'm already relaxed because I'm not thinking about anything. It's very soothing. Okay. So now I'm going to add three or four colors. When you're picking your colors, you want to choose colors that complement each other. Um, um, I choose color white just because if you choose too many colors that are similar, it can get muddy and then it's not for art at all. I mean, it might, but I, most chances you're not going to get what you're looking for. So you want to choose colors that are, so here's my pre-mixed oh, paint. I'm going to do blue. And for those of you who don't want to mix and do all this crazy like scientist stuff, they actually have um, pouring paint that's already ready mixed. So here's one version right here. Um, I'm going to use this color also. And, and I think I'm going to use this color too. And I might add a little yellow in there. Also, maybe hints of black. Not sure. So here, ready mixed. Sorry, guys. In this ready mixed um, kit, they come with these containers that have measurements on the size already. So again, if you're somebody that's not into math and you don't want to think about all that stuff, then the cups are here to assist you. So I'm going to put a little bit of white at the bottom here. Um, that's the color that might come up on top. So the first color you put in is the last color you will see come out of your canvas, come out on the canvas. So I'm gonna pour a little bit of blue. I can tell you there are different ways to um, create acrylic pours. You have what is called a dirty uh, pour, a flip pour, um, also swiping, torching, um, Dutch pours. There's so many different pours. So again, if you want to take this a step further to learn more about this, I will look into um, different type of pours. 
So that was blue. I'm gonna put a bit of yellow in here. Then some white to break it up a bit. And then I'm just gonna keep kind of doing this back and forth until I get to about hmm, six ounces of paint. I don't know why I chose these colors, to be honest. I've never really used them except once on that canvas that I showed you earlier. I also like black, um, so I'm gonna play with this, even though I said to use three to five colors. Um, I'm going to be conservative with black. Just a heads up about black. When you use too much black, it will overpower the colors and uh, everything else will get just get lost in the sauce. So just be careful about using black and white because colors could pop. I have no clue what's about to happen um, with this mix. I can tell you again, I, I wasn't in the best mood and right anxiety or nerves that I have are gone. And this is what art, if I'm not in a good space, it just puts me, it levels my mood immediately. If you set expectations, then art will not do that for you. You just kind of got to be flexible with the process. I'm almost there. I got like three more ounces to go. while I'm pouring and you want to cut some of the stuff. Okay, one more out. Samantha, I am learning so much with this little technique that you're showing us. I wish I had a canvas here where I can actually do every step that you're saying. Yes, I know. Um, that's why I encourage people to kind of like get their own supplies. And if they want to do a one-on-one -on -one session, they can definitely do that with me. Um, they have questions. I don't mind sharing that information also. So here goes my camera. All right. So right now, as you can see, I don't know if you can tell, but there's some beautiful things happening in this cup right now before I even started. If you can see the cells are um, formulating, the, the colors are mixing. Um, this color combination actually is cute. So um, we, we, can, we, actually, can, we can see them perfectly, Samantha, but when you um, show them on your phone, can you hold them there for a little bit? It takes like a little while for the camera to focus on the colors. Okay. More to the, yeah, right there. Okay, so let me remove myself so they can see it better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, the, I have a lot of blue in here, so I'm a little nervous about that. 
but we'll see what happens. And the beautiful thing is if you don't like something, you can play around with it. Um, so I'm actually going to do a flip pour and it's going to get messy. Normally I would take the canvas, put it on top of the cup and then flip it over and then release the cup. But because I have the base on there, um, that's going to get too messy. So I'm just going to quickly flip it over and pray all goes well. So before I do that, let me just push this camera down a little bit more. There we go. All right. So one, two, three. There we go. So you can see some of the, oh my gosh, that's so pretty. All right. So you can see some of the color here. I'm just going to lean this over. I don't know if you guys can see. I let the cup sit for a few so that all the paint at the bottom can get down to the bottom of the canvas. This color combo is so pretty. Okay, so let me give it a few more minutes. So let me go over a couple of more things. Remember, choose three to five colors. You wanna just start with three to five because when you start to mix more than that, it can get very hectic. Um, in terms of how much paint to use, if you use one ounce of paint, then you want to use double the amount of the Floatrol mix, which is the pouring medium. Just to show you quick while this is going down, some kits come with pouring medium. So here's a gloss one right here. And you, all you do is pour this in the paint and you're all set. So you don't have to actually take the Floatrol or the Elmer's glue to mix with water to get the pouring medium. You can just purchase this ahead. I can tell you that this, it can get expensive. So that's why I buy Floatrol from the hardware store. Um, it can cost anywhere from $8 to $15, depending on the size that you get in the Floatrol. So if you find yourself wanting to do a lot of mixes, I would probably get the Floatrol or Elmer's glue. You take Elmer's glue, mix it with water, and now you have a pouring medium to add to the paint. And the point of using the pouring medium is to extend the paint and dilute the paint so that it can maneuver around the canvas. So I'm getting ready to pick this up and I'm kind of just gonna move around with the paint a little bit. Use, oop, well, alrighty. So I have to immediately pick the canvas up and begin to tilt so that I don't lose the paint. Now, um, some people use silicone to create cells um, I didn't put any in here, but the cells are already being created. I'm moving this around, so I hope you guys can see. You can see the white paint is protecting the colors from moving off of the canvas, at least immediately off the canvas. And you can see the purpose of me having gloves on is to help maneuver some of this paint. So I'm losing some of the black, which I don't like. And so I might end up like adding more black in here somehow. Like some of this negative space, the white is the negative space. Um, so I'm gonna leave some of it like on the edges. And this black that I have over here, as you can see, Okay. So you wanna get your edges, the side of the canvas also. So I just take my gloves and I kinda of just touch up the sides with the gloves. That's what I'm doing over here. And there you go. So give me a second. I'm going to take these gloves off because it's messy. And basically this is one version of doing acrylic pouring. So this one that I did is called a flip pour. You can also do a version where you layer all the paints in a cup and then just pour them on or you can pour it by doing a tree ring which will create circles or a circle effect on the canvas and then you can also um do a dutch pour 
which you just layer each color on top of each other and then move things around. One other thing that I usually do is use a heat gun. Some artists use a chef's torch to create large cells with, within the paint. So right now I don't have too many cells because I didn't put any silicone in it. Um, some of these kits come with silicone. Here's the silicone right here. Um, but if you can't afford the silicone or don't want to spend a lot of money on this, you can get the coconut, um, uh, coconut oil from um, the hair store, or believe it or not, you can use uh, lubricant, <laughs> which has silicone in it, most of them, not the water-based one, um, which you can use inside your paints as well, and it'll create nice cells for you. So this is pretty much the end of the demo here. So awesome. when you're mixing your paint, to make sure that there it has consistency as you can see the paint just maneuvered all over the canvas and um, if you want cells like large circles in your paintings then you want to try or, or liquid text pouring medium which for some reason creates a lot of cells in them so so let, let me go resources. let me go to the resources yes and then we're going to go to the comments and the questions and a q a if you guys have any um let's see so those are the resources samantha is that where you usually get your stuff say that again so this other resources is this where you usually get your materials yes um if the quarantine wasn't going on i would be um Shopping on Amazon? <laughs> Pretty much. I, I would be at Michael's craft store. So Michael's have a sale. Their sales sometimes go up to 70% off, but there's always something you can use in terms of discounts. Nothing that I have, I buy full price at all, except if it's something that I really need, like paint brushes, because this is not the only type of art that I do. Um, so I think if there's one thing that I probably would spend full price on, it's probably paint brushes. But anything else, I will not go with Michael's if I do not use their, their coupons. They always have coupons. There's no point in spending full price if you don't have to. Um, but since the quarantine, I've used Amazon. I have Amazon Prime, so I literally get my things very quickly, even through this quarantine. And I was getting my items like the next day. Um, oh, wow. They have a lot of great items for you. You can go on Amazon and look for acrylic pouring kits. Um, and kind of just start your journey there. So I see you have a uh, Facebook. Is that where people can stay in touch with you or if they wanna follow you or if they wanna get more information or a one-on-one -on -one tutorial? Is that the best place for them to go to um, your Facebook page? Yes, yeah, so I just converted. I'm still switching over some art over there, but I just created an art page. So it's SN Art Therapy. And you'll see a lot of the acrylic pour there and then some other type of art that I've been doing um, just to help relax my... So I ha I'll be adding the art there. So it's SN Art Therapy on Facebook. Okay. Uh, let me see. Did you have another slide? No, I don't think so. No. So no, now, no. Let, well then? No, oh, okay. just the uh, services. <laughs> Oh, hold on. How did I skip that? Okay, it's common. Okay, here you go. Yep, so besides um, painting, I have a few other things that I do. Um, since the quarantine, I have a lot of time on my hands, so I've gotten requests for re resume building really great at doing research for folks you know a lot of people want to spend time with their families or have such a heavy schedule that there's some parts of their work that they cannot do and so whether it's internet research or assistance with social media um, administrative tasks like document creating database management and then of course i have the bedroom candy consultancy where my focus is really on sexual wellness but i utilize the business to promote that and so the actual parties through Bedroom Candy is also there as well. 
This is great. Oh, it looks a little dark, Samantha. Oh, it looks better now. So let's go to the comments. So now you know if you wanna um, follow Samantha or if you want more information, you can always go here. Her email's gonna be there. Once we're done with the five days, you're all gonna get an email with um, the speaker's contact, their email address, and how you can reach them on social media. So don't worry if you didn't take notes, you will get those things. So let me go to the comments now. So Chantel says, hello. Hi. Let me go here. Tavia says that the picture that when you was pouring, she said it looks like a view of the earth. Very accurate, it did. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Chantel says um, about the picture when you was pouring, beautiful, great colors. It looks like the ocean, that too. Now let me go to the Facebook page. So Gloria says hi. Hey D, D Porter says hi. hi. Katie, thank you for joining us. Let's see who else? Tamika, thanks for joining us. Vanessa says thank you for sharing. I will definitely try this with my son. Um, uh -huh. Katie Swaven. Let me see if I have any other comments here. So there's no other comments. So guys, if you want to get in touch with Samantha, oh Samantha, are those the three that we're gonna raffle? Yes. So we're gonna raffle those tomorrow on top of the bigger raffle too. So we're gonna have three, four, four total things that we're gonna raffle. And the raffle is really for those of you that took time out of your busy schedule to register for the summit. And if you have not registered for the summit, guess what? You are not too late. You can register up until tomorrow at 4 p.m. And I will post the link right here somewhere in the comments when we're done so you can go ahead and register you still have time all you got to put in is your email address and your first name so anything last minute you want to say samantha before we let you go no thank you for the opportunity for letting me share um this art and i really hope people really just take advantage of um exploring their artistic side we all have it whether it's small or large um maximize off of it some of you are probably more artistic than you realize and so i would say have fun thank you darling thank you for having me here thank Same you for, for you. actually thank taking you. the time because i know you had a rough um week day and you still came out and showed up show up and show out love it thank you <laughs> bye guys i'll see you at six make sure you come back at six we have another speaker at six so make sure you come back at 6 p.m. because we're going to have another amazing speaker that you do not want to miss at 6 p.m. So till next time, take care of yourself and each other, and I'll see you here in a couple hours.